It's your boy Nguyen now is back with another bang on video. Well, yes, ladies and gentlemen, we've got some unrealistic news for you guys. Yes, that doesn't mean that it's completely clickbait, but unrealistic in the terms of uh, the news that we've got today is wow. You're gonna love it. You're gonna love it. You're gonna love it. Yes. Let's talk about it straight away because uh, and yeah, uh, let me remind you guys uh, if you can, uh, you know, whatever app you can use online or I personally use a uh, creator uh, create formation. dot com go to createformation dot com and create your best formation that Arsenal can play using Thomas Partey and the best Arsenal eleven and what you can do is uh you know you could actually uh you know put it on my Instagram or Twitter and I'll definitely you know uh make it a part of my video and yes I will definitely be uh, using them in my video and giving you giving you credit for that so yes my tomorrow's live is all about uh as Creating the best formations possible with Thomas Partey in the lineup. Well, stay tuned for that, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't, because yeah, hundred hundred subscribers away from thirteen thousand subscribers. Help me reach there. Well, with in return, I will give you daily Arsenal content. Man, this is the best place to be for daily Arsenal content and daily Arsenal discussions. Well, talking about more stuff, let's talk about directly about James Bengay's comments. He actually he actually informed uh, Arsenal about that. Arsenal are remaining interested in some. Youngsters, some new players will be uh, Arsenal uh, will be on Arsenal's radar, and number one on that list is uh, this one from Red Bull Salzburg, Patson Daka. Yes, the Gunners are currently tracking Patson Daka, Otson Edward, and don't not and not to forget Dominique Zabozalai. Yes, they're looking at Patson Daka. They're looking at Otson Edward, and they're also looking at Dominique Zabozalai as. The future. So yes, Edu Gaspar is personally looking into these kind of players, and let's see if Arsenal can bring them to the Emirates. And talking about more stuff, according to Julian Lawrence, here's a bigger update about Hassan Awar. Awar's move to Arsenal collapsed with the players' agent largely to blame. Sources said Brahim Awar asked for a large commission for his brother to sign for Arsenal. A figure of ten million pounds has circulated among reports, but that has not been confirmed yet. But he asked ten million pounds for uh, himself as a commission to get Hassan Awar to Arsenal. Yes, that's what how things turned out. And sources also have said to ESPN that Awar wanted to leave Lyon last summer, but was persuaded to stay. This time around, he had his heart set on a move to Arsenal, but the club could not agree terms. So let's see. Well, most importantly, I think he needs to sack his agent. He needs to change his agent, and he needs to tell his brother. For you to get ten million pounds, I'm stuck with a team that is not, uh, that is finding it difficult to even win one game in League One. Well, so it's too difficult, yeah. But moving on, while well, talking about some realistic uh, things, let's talk about so, so something realistic. Saliba is set to join a Championship club before the October 16th deadline. It could be Watford and Brentford because they are among the possible destinations for him. Uh, as a result of Arteta's assertion, the centre back is not ready for the regular Premier League football, according to James Oley. And Arteta and his uh, backroom staff believe the 19-year-old needs more time to develop. Despite impressing in League One, sources have suggested ESPN that they would like to see the Frenchman improve in defending set pieces and mature in style, notably avoiding diving into tackles. So let's see. He would want Arsenal would want uh, him to you know uh, prevent that diving into tackles. But more importantly, yes, that's what Arsenal are seeking right now. And uh, Saka, on making his England debut, has said it's another dream come true to make my debut for England, and hopefully it can be the first of many. The game was uh, quite different, and the intensity was high. Obviously, I used to get used to my teammates, but I grew in confidence as the game went on. He further said, "I'm happy with the performance. There are a few things I can improve, but I'll take confidence from this because it is always a special moment to play for my country." Putting the shirt on was a very special moment. So yes, this confirms Bukayo Saka loves to play for England. While talking about more stuff, here's this guy, and much love to him because what he said right now is definitely going to make him love more. Well, uh, Dani Sabayos uh, said in a recent interview that I spoke with Madrid to say that Mikel wanted me to come back. They asked me to wait a month, but I was clear that I wanted to return to my club where I had found my best level. He said Arsenal as my club. Wow. He further goes on saying that with Mikel, I found my uh, happiness as a player and as a person, and that is key for a player. When a player is totally happy personally and footballistically, you find the right position on and off the pitch. I decided to stay for another year. 
So let's see how things will turn out. And more importantly, Danny Ceballos to Arsenal. Well, if he if he comes in handy, I think the more he plays in an in an advanced role, the better. And talking about Martin Keown's response about Mesut Ozil, he says one assumes that Arteta would have given him an opportunity, and he's not really happy with Ozil's work ethic. If you think of the money it's costing Arsenal, 18 million pounds a year. That's the equivalent of the interest payments when they took out a loan on Emirates Stadium. So yes, yes, the financial thing is is a bit of the problem. But more importantly, let's talk about something special. Let's talk about this young young lad, Matteo Guendouzi. Well, uh, speaking after captaining France's under 21s to a final win over Liechtenstein on Thursday night, Guendouzi said his time at Arsenal is not at and and at all he said it is not that i just really needed to play this year a new challenge uh, that was the most important thing for me i am still young i am only 21 so playing time was the top priority for me so uh, hertha berlin uh, i know that i will be able to express myself in a magnificent league obviously he respects bundesliga a lot uh, they are a very good club with big ambitions so i have to uh, have left to go on loan there for a year so I will give everything I can for this club. I needed playing time. I need to play. I needed to enjoy myself on the pitch. And that is what I am going to do this year. Now we all know Arsenal technical director Edu revealed earlier in the week that Guendouzi as well as Lucas Sorera, who would join Atletico Madrid on a similar loan had both asked to leave over the summer. Uh, so he said the market situation was really strange. Uh, it was difficult to manage well because nobody was 100% comfortable to do the deals. Even loan players or to swap players was even more difficult. I think we did it quite well, according to Edu. If you see Lucas Torreira, if you see Mateo, I think for them it was really, really important to move, play more games, be more comfortable and happier because both came to me and Mikel to talk about the possibility to go to have more games and play more minutes. And talking about William Saliva, let's see where he ends up. Well, uh, talking about more stuff, Norwich, Brentford and Watford reportedly among potential suitors. But let's see. Well, the problem is with Arteta is keen for Saliba to get game time and a year of transition alone to the championship with a domestic transfer window open until October 16th is a growing possibility. So that is not the talk of the town. The talk of the town is the football fans. Yes, the football fans are up in arms over the Premier League's decision to charge £14.95 to watch games. Gary Neville has actually slammed the top flight for its really bad move while others proclaim football is dead after the announcement. Another person wrote 14.5, 14.95 to watch it on box office. Glad to see where the club's priorities lie. They should be doing everything to get fans back in grounds and doing everything to keep fans involved and engaged until they can. Football is dead. So Gary Neville tweets out, uh, this is a really bad move for by the Premier League to charge 14.95 for single matches that have been shown free for six months. And talking about more stuff, well, the Premier League clubs are today poised to agree to non-televised matches being available to all fans, but supporters will have to pay to watch with the matches only available through a special subscription fee. Yes, ever since the Premier League's restart in June, all matches have been available through one of the Premier League's four broadcasting partners, Sky, BT, Amazon Prime and the BBC. With fans locked out, the clubs left, they have no option to ensure supporters were able to watch their teams in action. But there are concerns that the two main broadcasters' patience over the loss of their prized exclusivity is not boundless and that there could be a knock-on impact with the companies demanding a further rebate. Premier League clubs already face having to pay back £330 million. We all know that. But let's talk about something else. Let's talk about Mazut Ozil. Well, Simon Jordan's criticism earlier, Trevor Clint Sinclair has actually backed Mazut Ozil about the Ganasaurus uh, thing. He said, it's a nice gesture. It's a genuine thing he's done. It's a massive own goal from Arsenal. Ozil's certainly had won over them here. But let's talk about it. Somebody's not happy about it. And it's all about Talk Sports outspoken pundit Simon Jordan is not happy at all about the whole uh, Ganasaurus issue. For those of you who don't know, Jerry Key, the man inside the giant green dino costume, has been let go by Arsenal after 27 years as his role was deemed no longer necessary. So Simon Jordan literally uh, destroyed Mesut Ozil. He said, kindness is a good thing when you do it in a self-effacing uh, way. Uh, but uh, he's not doing it in a self-effacing way. 
Uh, he's doing it in a way to make a point with Arsenal. And at the same time, he's sitting back and saying, I'm the only one that's not really prepared to take a pay cut because I don't trust the people that pay me 300k a week to deploy my money sensibly. So what I'll do is, I'll jump on a cause that will actually make them look bad. I don't think it's appropriate. If, he's, if he wanted to do it, he could have done it on the silent. Uh, he would have done it not by actually making a big, big point about it. Well, talking about it, the respect to Leicester City because they were the only club to vote against the pay-per-view model at today's Premier League meeting. Yes, Leicester City were the only club to vote against the pay-per-view thing that the clubs have to pay a lot amount of money to actually uh, watch the uh, Premier League game through a subscription fee. So yes, these were the news of the day. I hope you enjoyed what it became. We have all the views and news and everything about Arsenal coming to this platform every single day twice. So what you got to do is subscribe and hit the bell icon because when you do that, you get two videos about Arsenal every single day and we go live every day. And tomorrow, we're going to talk about Thomas Partey, how he will be perfectly suited in Arsenal's system and what system will Arteta will deploy is all we're going to talk about. If you guys want to be a part of it, if you guys want to be, uh, you know, if you have an, an idea of how to, you know, how Arteta can... Uh, 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 use the formation, the best uh, 11 that you can create. Create a formation by using createformation.com. No, it's not a website that I get. I got money for to actually, I use that. That's why it becomes much more easier. If you can, if you can create, you know, a football field where you can actually uh, use those images or even if not images, just the names of the players. What is the best Arsenal 11 according to you? If you can make an uh, 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 IMG or PNG image, uh, not PNG image, uh, a JPEG image, you can send me via Instagram. The handle of my Instagram is already there on the screen. The real ending owner or on Twitter, you can send me those images. I prefer Instagram. You can send me those images. Uh, so, you know, you guys can, uh, you know, I can feature those images and your team, your formation, your team can be featured on the Indian Gooner episodes. Uh, coming forward. So yes, let me know what is the best Arsenal 11 before the Man City game. Do let me know. Whatever be the entries, I'll definitely, uh, you know, try to make them featured on my channel. And if you can, join my Fantasy Premier League, the code of which is already on the screen. So cheers. I'll see you in my next video. Don't forget to subscribe. I will see you in my next video. Cheers.